Barbara Stanworth may be in for a slight shock. Her son, Anthony Dion Faye, just sold a provocative story about his relationship with Barbara. Hi, friends. Ralph Williams, one of the world's largest board dealership. Sounds like a lot of supernatural baloney to me. Supernatural, perhaps. Baloney, perhaps not. I, I don't read papers. I don't listen to the radio. I haven't seen a television in years. adjusted those rabbit ears you're on the right channel welcome back to trailer trash tv's what television was i'm your host scotty j and we're just going to launch right into it this particular time around classic installment of uh, i married joan followed up with a classic classic episode of adventures of ozzy and harriet ozzy and harriet nelson with their little sons ricky and david ricky becoming a huge pop phenomenon at the time so you can make the transition from music to television and vice versa Here's an early example of that. Stay tuned to these, and I'll be right back. there's any connection between my pot roast and your pot belly. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, Joni, one good meal deserves another. How about having lunch with me tomorrow? Oh, that would be wonderful, Brad. Let's go to that cute little... Uh-oh, I just remembered. I can't go. Tomorrow is every other Monday. Oh, afternoon bridge with the girls. Yeah, and I just can't disappoint them, dear. I'm sorry, Brad, but when you've got a wife as popular as I am, you've got to make your dates with her far in advance. Uh, that's what it looks like. Whose uh, house are you playing at tomorrow? Oh, let's see. Um, gosh, I don't know. I'm going to call Ruthie Gibson to find out, dear. <laughs> Funny they didn't let me know. After all, I'm the president of the club, you know. Not only that, I'm the life of every game they have. <laughs> Oh, they wouldn't dream of playing without me. Hello, Ruthie. Uh, this is the president. I mean, this is Joan. Uh, say, where are we playing tomorrow? Oh, you're not? Well, where are the other girls going? You don't know? Oh, okay. I I'll call Virginia. Bye. I guess Ruth got tired of losing. She practically never wins at all. Hello. Uh, bye. Uh, this is Joan. Say, I just spoke to Ruth Gibson, and she won't be able to play tomorrow. And you won't be able to play either? How come? Oh, matinee at the Biltmore, hmm? Well, I better call Mabel then. Yeah. Have fun at the show. I never would have believed that Virginia would pass up a bridge game for a matinee. Joni, uh, there isn't a matinee at the Biltmore tomorrow. There is? No. Uh, hello, Mabel. Uh, say, listen, I was just talking to the other girls and... Oh, you got a cold? 
Oh, well, you better take care of it. You don't want to miss it. Oh, what a shame. She gave me a gift. Yeah, well, then I better call Mildred and... Uh... No, I didn't know that. No, she didn't tell me that her sister was visiting her from Chicago. Well, okay, dear, take care of yourself. Bye. She didn't sound like she had a cold. I wonder if... Joni, Joni, these girls are your friends. Well, of course, Fred, you're right. <laughs> and they're, they're crazy about me. Well, sure they are, dear. Mildred hasn't got a sister from Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I really think this is the most exquisite lawn furniture I've ever seen, Mabel. It's really lovely. Well, thank you, girls. I was hoping you'd like it. Okay, let's play great. No, dear. Yes. Let's get Joan's problem settled first. Oh, say, I wonder if she believed me when I said I wasn't playing today. <laughs> <laughs> me, too. I told her I was going to be in that name. She told me to enjoy myself. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I said? I claimed I had a cold. Oh, oh no. Mabel. Yes. Why do you think you couldn't make it, Mildred? Why? I told her your sister from Chicago was visiting. Oh, oh, oh now, oh, you know, oh. that's pretty cool for Joe. Oh. I guess so, but it couldn't be helped. How <laughs> else could we have gotten together without her? That's right. If we're going to surprise her with a testimonial luncheon, we can only plan it when she is around. I guess that's right. Uh, okay, now, where will it be and when? Well, how about the blue room at the Pierre? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, when? How about tomorrow? Sure, Tomorrow's fine. fine. Wonderful. Wonderful. And remember, girls, it's a surprise, so let's keep it a secret. Won't oh, don't good. worry, Not we will. Now, that's a uh, menu. When? Oh, I think we ought to start with... Oh, oh I just remembered. <laughs> what? Tomorrow's Tuesday. Yeah. Charlie's bringing his boss home for dinner, so I'll have to spend the whole day cooking. Oh, oh for heaven. Oh, look, okay. girls, how about Wednesday instead of Tuesday? Wednesday's oh, Wednesday. okay yeah, by yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday's fine. All right, Wednesday is Joni's surprise luncheon. Mm -hmm. Now about the menu. Good morning, lover. Oh, good morning, dear. Hey, aren't we done up kind of fancy for this uh, time of the day? Why do you forget what day this is? This is Tuesday. This is the day that the girls are giving me the surprise testimonial luncheon. And I want to be dressed for the occasion. Well, um, oh, Joni, aren't you, uh, aren't you eating anything? Oh, no, Brad. It'll probably be a very big fancy luncheon, and I don't want to spoil my appetite. If the luncheon's at the Blue Room, how come they didn't do something to make sure that you'd be there? Oh, now, don't you worry about that, Brad. You just leave it to my friends. Before very long, one of the girls will be around asking me to go shopping with her, some such excuse like that. And at noontime, I'll be maneuvered into the blue room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the occasion for it? Oh, sure, dear. The occasion? Well, I guess it's because that I'm coming at the end of my term as president of the club. <laughs> they must think that I did a pretty good job. Yeah. Oh, those girls are so sweet, Brad. Yes, mm -hmm. Johnny, they certainly are. Yeah. You know, when they get me into that room, I'm going to try to act as if I'm real surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I got a better idea. What's up? You know, instead of waiting around here for them to call me or pick me up, I'm going to go down to the blue room myself. And then when they try to find me, I'll be gone. And they won't be able to call off the luncheon because it'll be much too late, see? And when they walk into that room and they see that I'm there already, <laughs> well, all I can say is that it'll be a surprise to end all surprises. <laughs> Blue Room. Yes, yes, there is a luncheon here today. The loyal order of brotherly Broncos. No, none of the gentlemen have arrived as yet. You're welcome. Hi. Uh, hi. Anybody here yet? Uh, no, no, it's a little bit early. For the guest of honor? Yes. What are you serving? Why, the, uh, the usual thing, a uh, consomme, chicken a la king. <laughs> Excuse me, but uh, who are you? Oh, I'm Joan Stevens. Well, I'm afraid that you've made a little mistake. Well, listen, I know that I'm here a little ahead of time, but uh, this is sort of a surprise in reverse, get it? <laughs> 
Oh, I see. You're going to do a little uh, dancing, huh? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Oh, it's just beautiful. A jewel case. Uh, read the inscription on it. <laughs> to old Fatso from the gang. <laughs> oh, you girls are such kidders, you clowns, you. <laughs> With our best wishes for many hours of smoking pleasure. <laughs> the humor, though. The cigars. It's for me. Well, who are you? Well, I'm Fatso. What kind of a practical joke is this? Practical joke? What are you talking about? Why, I'm the guest of honor at a luncheon of the women's club. Well, not he or not. We're all members of the loyal order of brotherly broncos. Say, isn't there a meeting here today of the ladies' club? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, just that loyal order of brotherly broncos. So you'd better leave. <laughs> Unless, uh, unless you want to join the loyal order of brotherly broncos. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. I'm already a member of the loyal order of the sisterly jackasses. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, please sit down, dear. No, I can't sit down. I think what those girls did to you, pretending to give you a surprise luncheon and then not showing up. Well, it'd be different if they did it to a total stranger. But to do it to me, a total friend. Well, there's no excuse for it, dear. No excuse. It's, it's just downright cruel. They must have known that I was hiding behind the bushes at Mabel's house, and they planned the whole thing as a joke on me. Some joke. I thought those girls were your friends. Anyone can be popular. Let Oliver Putnam teach you the secret of making people like you. Do you have difficulty keeping friends? Yeah. Do you find yourself missing out on good times? Mm. Do people seek your company? Yeah. Rule uh, number four. Avoid arguments. You can never win an argument. Even if you're right, give in. Always agree with the other person. Give in. Immediately. People will hate you if you prove they're wrong. They'll love you if you agree with them. Okay, but I'm not going to win many arguments with your system. All right, now. Uh, before we terminate the first session, let's review. Rule number one, talk to people about themselves. Oh, that's when I ask you, how's your... Uh... Right? Now, rule number two, it flatter people. Butter them up. That's right. Now, rule number three, say their names and shake their hands. Goodbye, Mr. Stevens. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. It's been Clark. very nice. It's a pleasure. Oh, oh. Uh, rule number four, avoid arguments. <laughs> no, Vi, Joan isn't home. What? You, you want her to come to lunch at the Pierre? Oh, of course I'll tell her. What? A testimonial. Oh, I know that Joan will be very pleased. Yes, yes, I I'll tell her. Uh, thank you, Vi. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, anyone call? Uh, what do you mean by anyone? Any of my friends call? What friends? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't have any friends. But you like me, don't you, Brad? Well, let's say that I'm, I'm used to you. Brad, it was bad enough about the girls. Oh, no, no, Joni, I'm kidding. You are? Oh, sure, I'm crazy about you. And what's more, the girls must have changed their mind, too, because they're down at the Pierre right now waiting for you to come to lunch. Oh, stop, Pete. No, Mabel just called, Joni. Honest? Oh, I'd better get down there right away. Gee, that Mr. Putnam is a genius. Only one lesson, and people are starting to like me already. <laughs> Oh, Fellow members, we, the Executive Council of the Ladies' Club, are gathered to do honor to our retiring president, Joan Stevens. <laughs> She's done a wonderful job, 
and to show my personal appreciation. Here's a gift, Joan. Oh, Vi, it wasn't necessary. <laughs> and here's one from me. Oh, Mabel. No, I got one too. And here's mine, Joanie. Oh, see, see, see. see. <laughs> oh, well, girls, I, I want to thank you all very much. Speak their names and shake their hands. I mean, I, I want to thank you, uh, Ruth, and Vi, and Mildred, and Mabel. And, and I want you to know uh, Ruth, well. and Vi, and Mildred, and Mabel, that I'm very touched by the honor that you, uh, Ruth, and I, and Mildred, and Mabel <laughs> have bestowed upon me, and I will never forget this day if I live to be a hundred years old. Wonderful. Joni, how do you like my new haircut? Well, Vi, to be perfectly honest with you. Flatter people. Flatter people. <laughs> it's stunning. Oh, and that suit you're wearing, it's just beautiful. Oh, now, Joan, it's very ordinary. You were with me when I bought it two years ago. Oh. Uh, but it has so much chic and style, and you really do something for it. Joan, you've told me a thousand times that you don't like this suit, and I'm not crazy about it either, so don't be catty. Uh, but I, I like it. I, I like it. I, I'm very happy that you are, and it's lovely. Joan, you're going out of your way to insult me, and I'm not going to stand for it. Why? I... I... Talk to people about themselves. Talk to people about themselves. That's when I ask about your... About my what? <laughs> about your appetite. I, I just love to see you eat. Uh, because, you know, you enjoy food like a real connoisseur. And you really know good food, you do. <laughs> now listen, Joan. I know I've gained a little weight. But you don't have to rub it in, you know. Well, you, you have not gained weight. Why, you're just exactly as heavy as you were when I first met you. Don't you be insulting, Joe. But I didn't. Come right out and say it. You think I'm as fat as a horse? Well, no, I don't. Say it. I'm as fat as a horse. No, I don't. Avoid arguments. Avoid arguments. <laughs> okay, you're as fat as a horse. That's <laughs> Go ahead, take your presents back. You're nothing but a bunch of Indian givers. Why, I tried to be friends, but I can't. I can see that, so okay, goodbye to all of you. Here you are, dear. Here, take this. Take this. Oh, thanks, Joe. Oh. Boy, I really told that vi off. Yes, yes, I, I'm sure you did, dear. Just, just relax and forget all about the girls. Yeah, you're right, Brad. I won't give those girls another thought. Uh, you certainly would have thought that that Mabel would stick up for me after all those things I've done yeah, for her, the I, favors. I know, and... Yes, I know, dear. Yeah. Just take, take it easy, honey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why do they hate me, Brad? Why? You just forget about the girls. Out of your mind. Hmm? Oh, they hate me. <laughs> Dear Brad, since you won't allow me to come home, I've taken a hotel room. You and the girls have made it very plain that you're anxious to get rid of me. And perhaps it would be for the best if I put an end to it all. I know you'll be happier with me gone. Your loving wife, the late Joan Stevens. <laughs> Cork tastes like poison. Do it now. Drink it. Don't rush me. I'm, I'm trying. There must be an easier way.
And don't shoot. <laughs> Nothing works. Mm. What am I going to do now? <laughs> what service? What are you waiting for? Do it. I guess I'll have to call the whole thing off. What about the window? The window? Yeah, the window. You girls don't miss a thing, do you? Look, girls, not the window, huh? Not the window, girls. Remember rule four. Remember rule four. Avoid argument. Okay, girls, the window. <laughs> If this doesn't work, I'll kill myself. <laughs> How can I be sure that Brad will get my note? I'll take it. <laughs> How can I jump from a basement? You certainly have botched up the whole thing, Joni. Well, Brad, I tried. Yeah, I know. I you certainly, open, I know. I got the you gun in botched the bottom, it. You right? really Please, uh, Brad, don't let the girls hate me. They hate me. Don't let them hurt me. They hate me. They hate me. They don't like me. Don't let them hurt me, Brad. Don't let them hurt me. Joni, Joni, what's the matter? Are, are, are you uh, are you all right there? Well, it wasn't my fault that the rope broke and the gun went off and broke the bottle. Joni, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> let her know. Joan, we talked it over and we agreed that we were all too sensitive. Yes, we shouldn't have gotten angry with you. After all, everybody likes you. You're the most popular girl in the club. I am? Mm -hmm. So we want you to take these presents and we'll have the lunch another time. <laughs> no, maybe I better not. I've been through this before. Well, come on, dear. Aren't you sure you see what's in them? Come on, dear. Huh? I think I know. <laughs> uh, a bottle of cologne. <laughs> oh, it's my favorite thing. Oh, it's flowery. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, Mabel, aren't you nice? Oh, oh and yes. for all you shouldn't yes. have, really, girl. We just wanted you to know how much we liked you. Yes, that's what we... We wanted you to know that we thought you were the most wonderful thing in the world. Oh. <laughs> and here's another present. We all pitched in on this one. Really? Well, believe me, girls, I certainly have learned my lesson. From now on, all I want is to be friends with everybody. No more fighting and no more arguing. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful, girls. It's from all of us, and it costs plenty. Size 40. <laughs> Who are you girls trying to insult? Oh, now, Joan, it must be a mistake. I'll say it is, and you girls are making it. Why, I'm never going to speak to you girls again as long as I live. And I'm never going to speak to you either. And that goes for me, too. Well, it's certainly all right with me. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. <laughs> I certainly told them off, didn't I, Brad? Jo oh, Joni, Joni, this isn't size 40. Oh, yes, it is. I saw it with my own eyes. Look. Oh, the price tag, $40. Hello, Mr. Putnam. I'd like to make an appointment for another lesson tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seen in tonight's cast were Geraldine Carr, Marjorie Bennett, Tony Ward, Sandra Gould, Charlotte Lawrence, Dick Elliott, and Hal Taggart.
and I am not feeling my usual self. <laughs> because of an ugly head cold, I take Alka-Seltzer Plus cold tablets. Because no other cold product gives faster, more effective relief of those ugly cold symptoms in so many ways. It contains a decongestant for my stuffed up sinuses, an antihistamine for that wretched runny nose, an aspirin for the ugly headache and the rotten feverish feeling, and it is a nice lemony flavor. Oh boy! And the bubbles mean it's dissolved, ready to go to work as soon as I drink it down. <laughs> Dr. Jekyllson, oh, I thought you was that ugly monster, Mr. Hyde. Nothing works faster than Alka-Seltzer Plus to get rid of the uglies. Ow! Love a puffed alphabet, D-O-R-D-O, sugary alphabet, F-O-U-R-P-O. Get it! Take this cereal you ever met. Talk about it. It's so good eating up the alphabet. Ow! Love a puffed alphabet, F-U-N. if one used it as a seasoning in cooking? A1 has 13 seasonings in it. Honey, honey! A1 adds enormous flavor. Shake some in the stew, Igor. No, no! Shake some on the meatballs, Beverly. You can use it to season salads, fish, and fowl. A1 is for sauce, it's a seasoning. 13 seasonings. Experiment with it. Didn't I tell you, without your rubbers, you'd catch cold? Oh, this kid never cleans his room. Ah, mental latum deep heating rub. Feel the warmth soak in. You don't feel like a monster now, eh, booby? Mental latum deep heating rub. If it can help Frank's cold, it can help yours. Once there was, there existed an ugly, ugly person. And what made him so ugly was that he had no taste, not one. Then he stumbled upon a box of screaming yellow zonkers and stuffed some into his face. Well, to his astoundment, they were great. Well, they were more than great. What they was was a magical butter glazed popcorn snack. So, if you're ugly or even semi-rotten looking, try screaming yellow zonkers. Maybe they'll change your life. Maybe not. Into the way, boo. Martha. <laughs> Frank and Betty has strawberry flavored sweeties. Count Chocula has chocolate sweeties. <laughs> and blueberry with blueberry flavored sweeties. <laughs> and here are the mini monsters. Five monsters in all. You can trade them with friends and put on a show. One mini monster in specially marked boxes of a monster cereal. One of the best liked of the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzy, who plays the part of Ozzy Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Isn't this a beautiful day? The birds are singing, and there's a light, balmy breeze blowing. It's a happy kind of a day. Oh, here come David and Ricky. Hmm. For some reason, they don't look particularly happy. I wonder what's wrong. Here's the stuff from the bakery, Mom. Oh, thank you, fellas. Did you have any trouble? No, ma'am. That darn Will Thornberry. Quiet, Ricky. What the heck? It makes the guy sore. Mom? Hmm? Have you seen that old tub we used to slide down the hill in? No, dear, I don't believe so. Good darn Will Thornberry. What seems to be the trouble? Will Thornberry. It's just something personal, Mom. We're trying to find the tub. Good gosh darn Will Thornberry. <laughs> what is the matter with Will, and what do you want with that old wash tub? We want it for something special. Yeah, we're going to fill it with water and make a booby trap. A booby trap? What for? For that gosh darn Will Thornberry. <laughs> 
What seems to be the trouble, fellas? We were just looking for that old washtub, Pop. They're gonna play some sort of a trick on Will Thornberry. What kind of a trick? We're gonna soak him with water. Well, I thought Will was one of your best friends. Yeah, so did we. Some people sure do change, boy. What's the matter? You guys mad at Will? Yes, ma'am, kind of. What do you mean, kind of? I'm fighting mad, boy. <laughs> now, what seems to be the big difficulty between you and Will all of a sudden? Will's having a birthday party tomorrow, and he didn't invite us. Oh, so that's it. Yeah, fine friend he turned out to be. Well, I think you've got this all wrong. I'm sure Will's birthday isn't until next Tuesday. That cake's gonna get awful stale by Tuesday. Cake? Yeah, we saw it down at Humphrey's Bakery. Yeah, Mr. Humphrey said it was for the Thornberries. Well, maybe it wasn't for Will's birthday. Well, sure it was, Mom. It had candles on it. We saw it. Well, now, look, wait a minute. Suppose Will is having a birthday party. Nobody can say he has to invite you guys. Try me, Mom. I can say it. <laughs> Let's get the facts straight here. Will didn't tell you he was having a birthday party, did he? He didn't have to, Pop. We saw the cake. Well, before you declare war on him, don't you think you ought to find out for sure? There could be a mistake, you know. There sure was a mistake, and Will made it, boy. I think you guys are acting pretty childish about this whole darn thing. Will isn't obligated to invite you to his party, you know. Does he have to ask you over every time he celebrates a special occasion? No, sir. Just every time he celebrates with ice cream and cake. Well, I still don't see what you're going to prove by playing some silly trick on him. Well, it's not exactly a trick on him. We're just going to tie a big bucket of water on the tree out back. Yeah, and then we're going to tie the rope to the post and camera flage it. And he'll only get wet if he happens to come on our property. Yeah, like if I happen to call him over. Sure. <laughs> well, you better forget all about it. I'm surprised at you guys. You can't go through the rest of your lives being mad at people just because they don't arrange things to suit you. After all, if Will didn't invite you to his party, he probably has a very good reason. Besides, it could be a misunderstanding all the way around, you know. Instead of being mean to him, be kind to your little neighbor. Call him over to play with you. That's the way to do things. Oh, don't worry, Pop. We'll call him over, all right. Sure, in a little while. Oh, Will. <laughs> oh, dopey. I'm just rehearsing my part. <laughs> That's enough of that nonsense. Now, let's cut it out. Would you just tell us where the bucket is, Pop? Well, the bucket is out in the garage. But wait a minute now, fellas. It's not for getting people wet. I think you're wrong, Pa. Haven't you heard the old song? The old soaking bucket. <laughs> hey, where have you been? I've been trying to find these boards. For two hours? Got a lot of help you are. OK, OK, let's get started. Get started? Are you kidding? Look, I already finished it. Oh, boy. Hey, that's terrific. How does it work? Well, see these strings here? We're going to attach them to a clothesline, and the clothesline will run across here and attach to the garage, and somebody will come walking by and trip on it. Say, Will Thornberry, for instance? <laughs> see here, you pull these strings and watch what happens. Oh, now we needed some water, and we're all set. Yeah, that's terrific. I can hardly wait. Oh, Will. Will you, Ricky? We're not ready for him yet. Yeah, but I can hardly wait. Well, control yourself and get some water in the pail over there by the garage. Hey, yeah, there's just one thing, though. What are all those bells doing up there? Well, that's just for good sportsmanship. Give a guy a fair warning. Now, get the water, will you? behind your back. Hey, what do you know, a pail? <laughs> I thought I told you boys to forget about that booby trap business. Where's David? David? What David? Now, how many Davids do you know? Well, there's David Copperfield, David and Goliath. All right. <laughs> I'm talking about David Nelson booby trapper. What's going on here? Well, I think the boys are fixing up that booby trap. Well, now, Rick, I told you guys not to play that trick on Will. Where's David? Well, he took it on the lamb. I mean limb. Now, let's stop this nonsense. Where's David? Well, I'm up here, Pop. 
Oh, for goodness sakes, what are you trying to do? Break your neck? Get down out of there. What are you doing up there anyway, Dave? Well, hello, everybody. Oh, oh hi. Hi, Maria. Isn't this a nice, friendly group? Well, actually, we have one missing link. He'll be swinging down any minute now. Hello, Mrs. Henderson. Take it easy now, Dave. Well, for goodness sake. Hi. Hello. What were you doing up there? I'm almost ashamed to tell you, Marion. They were rigging up, up some sort of a trick for Will garage, Thornberry. Will oh, well, boys will be boys. Help me. I thought Will was the best friend, David. So did I. That gosh darn Will Thornberry. <laughs> It seems that Will Thornberry's having a birthday party and he didn't invite the boys. They aren't even sure it is a birthday party. We saw the cake, Ma. I hope he swallows the candle. <laughs> you pick up the boards in this pail and you take them into the garage and then you go over and talk to Will about it. Oh, gosh darn Will Thornberry. The boys seem to think they ought to be invited to everything that goes on in this neighborhood. I don't know why they're making such a big fuss about it. Well, you know, boys will be boys. Sometimes children are much more sensitive about those things than grown-ups are. I think you're right. Although, my little girl Edith wasn't invited to the party and she hasn't said a word. Uh, well, I think the reason our boys are so upset is because they're such good friends of Will. Well, Edith is in the same class as Will, and she invited him to her birthday party. Very funny that she wasn't invited to his. Oh, well, there's probably some good reason for it. Well, I don't know what it would be. Why wouldn't he invite her? Well, maybe it's just going to be a small family party. A family party for a little boy? Well, I never heard of such a thing. Well, Edith had at least 20 children at her birthday party. Well, are you sure Will was there? Why, sure. He ate four dishes of ice cream and three pieces of cake. <laughs> well, it could be that Will forgot to invite Edith. Well, that's a fine thing to come to Edith's birthday party and not invite her to his. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. There must be some explanation. That gosh darn Will Thornberry. <laughs> Lunch is just about ready. Oh, uh, hi, Mom. Guess what? You saw Will Thornberry. Yeah, and he invited us to his party. Well, isn't that nice? I thought there was some mistake. It's not until next Tuesday. Now, aren't you glad you didn't declare war on him until you found out what the real story was? Yeah, I sure am. I'm just glad we didn't set that booby trap. Well, oh, back to some boys. Oh, hi, hi Pa. Pop. Did you hear the good news? What news is that? Will Thornberry invited us to his party on Tuesday. Oh, what did I tell you? Will wouldn't give a birthday party without inviting his best friends. Yeah, good old Will Thornbury. Good old ice cream and cake. Uh, <laughs> well, aren't you guys ashamed of the way you treated poor Will? Imagine setting up that booby trap to try and douse your best friend. You didn't really think he'd have a party and not invite you guys, did you? I don't know about David, but he sure had me worried. <laughs> well, i everything worked out well. Probably have a wonderful time at the party. Oh, I do think that cake is going to be a little stale by Tuesday night, don't you think so? What cake is that, Pop? You know, the cake you saw at the bakery, the cake for the party. Oh, that one. That's for the party tonight. But you said it was for the Thornberries. Yes, sir. Well, are you sure Will's party isn't tonight? No, the cake isn't for Will's party. It's for Mr. Thornberry's party. <laughs> Whose party? Mr. Thornberry, the father of the boy next door. <laughs> I wasn't invited. <laughs> Are you positive about this, boys? Yes, sir. Mrs. Thornberry told us herself. I don't understand. How, how could Thorny do this to me, his, his best friend? What's the matter, Pop? Well, nothing. And, uh, uh, David. Yes, sir? Uh, do you happen to know what you did with that big, uh, water tub that... <laughs> Dave, not right now. I'm busy. Well, looks like you're just sitting. <laughs> well, I'm busy uh, uh, sitting. Well, you said you played some football with us. Well, I, I know. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just not in the mood for it. 
You mad at us? No, 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 of course not. Just that the ingratitude of some people really amazes me. I don't understand how certain so-called friends can be so thoughtless. We forgive you. You don't have to play football with us. No, I was referring to somebody else, a certain neighbor of ours. You mean Mr. Thornbury? <laughs> I'd rather not mention any names, David. Yes, sir. Hey, if you play football with us, you can kick the ball through his window. <laughs> yes, I, I couldn't do that. Who knows? You might get lucky. <laughs> not what I mean. It's funny how some people turn out to be fair-weather friends. What's a fair-weather friend, Pop? Oh, that's a person who's your friend when it's nice and sunny, but if it starts to rain, look out, you can borrow somebody else's umbrella. You borrowed Mr. Thornberry's umbrella last year. Yeah, it's still in the hall closet. <laughs> I was only giving an example of a fair-weather friend. It means a person whose friendship you just can't depend on. Is Mr. Thornberry a fair-weather friend? Well, unfortunately, David, he seems to be. Maybe he's out of umbrellas. <laughs> This has nothing to do with umbrellas, Ricky. Mr. Thornberry is giving a party, and of all people, his best friend, his lifelong pal, isn't invited. You said parties weren't very important. Yes, I know, Ricky. You said not to get sore about it. Yes, I know, David. You said... Oh, all right, that's enough. I said, I said. Doesn't anybody else ever say anything around here? I do, but nobody ever listens to me. <laughs> this happens to be an entirely different situation. Children are inclined to overlook their friends. That's all right. But there isn't any excuse for an adult to do it. Conduct like Mr. Thornberry's is ridiculous coming from a full-grown man. Just childish. Why don't you go over and ask Mr. Thornberry about it? David, if Mr. Thornberry doesn't want to invite me to his party, I'm certainly not going to beg him. Oh, you don't want to go to his party anyway, Pa. You just eat a lot of ice cream and cake and make yourself sick. <laughs> Party, boys. I don't care about the party. The thing that hurts is that I'm completely forgotten after all I've done for Mr. Thornberry. Like what, Pop? Well, I don't keep a list, David, but believe me, I've done plenty of things. You borrowed his umbrella? <laughs> Mainly, I've been a good and true friend. You remember, I invited him to my birthday party. Should we hate Mr. Thornberry from now on? <laughs> Of course not. This isn't any of your worry. Whatever my feelings are, they, they don't concern you guys. Well, I kind of like them, Pop, if that's all right. Yes, certainly, David. You boys are entitled to your own opinions. Hey, here comes Mr. Thornberry now. Oh, I'll let him in. Yeah, let me let him in, David. He's probably come over to borrow some chairs or some dishes or something. Hi, Mr. Hi, Thornberry. Mr. Thornberry. Oh, hi, Dave. Hi, Rick. Pop's right there. Oh, the Pop, table. Mom has some cookies on the plate here for you. Oh, thank you, David. Thank you, David. Say, these cookies really look delicious. <laughs> Did you get anything to eat at your house? Oh, <laughs> sure, Oz. But no one makes cookies like Harriet. <laughs> well, don't you want any? Here, have one. You sure you can spare this? Well, sure, Oz. There's plenty there for both of us. Help yourself. Very nice of you to share my cookies with me. Yeah, I think so. People are always taking advantage of my generous nature. Uh, by the way, do you have any plans for this evening? No, nothing special. Probably stay home and catch up on a reading. I'll be home myself. I may go to bed early tonight. Not as if there isn't too much noise around the neighborhood. <laughs> I'll try to turn the pages quietly. <laughs> oh, don't you have any more cookies? Uh, no, thank you. You already gave me one. Besides, I don't happen to be very hungry. Gee, that's a shame. Go ahead. You can have some more if you'd like. <laughs> well, I don't want them all, but they are yeah, pretty good. <laughs> you know, it seems a shame to spend a beautiful night at home, and I have a feeling tonight's going to be a 
very last night. Oh, I don't know. I enjoy it once in a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just thinking it's, it's too bad somebody isn't giving a, a, a party tonight. <laughs> you know, I, somehow I just feel like going to a party tonight. <laughs> party? Well, yeah. yeah, it'd be pretty nice. I love parties. Oh, I thought so. I've read this book before. Gee, don't you have any new comic books around here? Oh, well, just a minute. I think I'll be going. Uh, just a second, Thorny. You left a few crumbs on the plate. <laughs> Wait a minute. Second thought, I think I will take them. I think I'll dump them right here in my pocket, and I'll nibble on them on the way home. <laughs> Gonna make out a list of all the things that Mr. Thornberry has borrowed from us and hold them to a strict accounting. Didn't he invite you to his party? He didn't even mention the party. Just sat down there stuffing himself on our cookies and reading up all your comic books. Let's see. Things that Mr. Thornberry has borrowed from us. Gordon Ray. Borrowed our garden rake. No, Pop, you borrowed his. It's in our garage. <laughs> well, take it back to him, Dave. I don't want any of his things around here. Should we take back his umbrella, too, Pop? Yes, take back everything that belongs to him. How about his toolbox? Everything. I wish he wouldn't clutter up our garage with all his junk. <laughs> Should we take back his wheelbarrow? Yes. No, on second thought, we'll keep the wheelbarrow. We'll need it to bring back all the stuff that he's borrowed from us. So far, there hasn't been anything. So many things, I just can't think of them at the moment. Let's see. Yes, he borrowed a pencil. A pencil? Right. And make sure he sharpens it. I'm gonna feel awful silly bringing a pencil back in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh, so here's where you're hiding. Oh, hi, where have you been? Oh, I had a little shopping to do. Pop's making a list of all the things that Mr. Thornberry's borrowed. Oh, never mind, Rick. So far, he owes us a pencil. <laughs> he also has my rain hat. I remember he borrowed it one day when he couldn't find his umbrella. What's <laughs> it No, oh, I might as well tell you. Do you realize that big bum Thornberry is giving a party tonight and hasn't even invited us? Oh, I guess I better tell you. Catherine Thornberry wanted to keep it a secret, but I can't stand by and see Rimsky and Korsakoff split up. Thorny doesn't know anything about the party. What do you mean? He's giving the party. No, dear. Catherine's giving the party, and we're all invited. It's a surprise anniversary party. A what? A surprise anniversary party. You know Thorny's memory. So far, every wedding anniversary has been a surprise to him. <laughs> so this year, Catherine's giving him a surprise party. Oh, Harriet, this is awful when I think of the terrible things I said to the poor guy. Gosh, how am I going to make this up to him? Let him keep the pencil. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Catherine had the bakery deliver the cake here so that Thorny won't see it. Oh, cake? Where is it? In the kitchen, but don't you touch it. Oh, Harriet, what do you think I am, a child? Come on, folks, let's go down and take a look at it. Oh, boy, will you look at that? Why, isn't that a beauty? That? I'm just tasting the candles. Well, now that you mention it, it is kind of a strange thing for them to put the candles on so soon. They usually put them on at the last minute. Yeah, we better take the candles out. Mmm. Mmm. Certainly is delicious cake. <laughs> It's very rare that a cake will look so good and, and also taste so good. Do you know in the old days when they baked a cake for the king, they'd always have an official taster. And he'd take a slice of the cake and, and taste it just to make sure that it uh, wasn't poison. Yeah, that's a good excuse, Pop. <laughs> Who needs excuses? I'll get the... No, 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 
on a wedding. I'm not gonna slice up this beautiful cake. However, I do think it'd be perfectly all right if we each took just one little dab off the edge of one of those rosebuds. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Hey, Pop, I thought you said just one dab. Well, I'm just straightening out the edge here. Anything I can't stand is an untidy cake. <laughs> There's one thing that worries me, though. When Thorny comes in the kitchen here so often, it'd be awful if he came in and discovered this. How about putting it in the garage? No, that'd be sort of unsanitary. Say, the station wagon's out there. I think I'll put it in the back of the station wagon. Open the door, Dave. Uh, Rick, wipe your face off. Why don't your mother see you with cake on your face? I told you guys not to get that booby trap. I didn't set it, Pop. Neither did I. Well, then who did? I did. As I saw that bakery truck deliver that cake to your house. What's a big idea having a party and not inviting me? Gosh, John Thornberry. Charlie. Forget that a completely different episode of The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet is heard every Friday night on radio. It's of your newspaper for time and radio stations. Aside from Leave It to Freakin' Beaver, you can see that The Adventures of Ozzy as Harriet was about as much Wonder Bread as a person could stand in a half hour. Um, yeah, they were milk and cookies, and that was, that was a conservative, um, the conservatism, conservativism of the time. You know, Mom wore pearls during you know, to make dinner. Dad wore a suit at every meal. Didn't matter if it was breakfast, didn't matter if it was dinner. Didn't matter if he was sitting in front of the TV after work. He had a suit on 24-7. You swear to God, he went to bed with the suit. But, and the kids never did anything wrong. Don't get me started on that stuff. But The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, classic example of classic 50s programming. I Married Joan was the same deal. Um, classic slapstick comedy, simple writing. Didn't have a, a huge staff of writers, but it worked. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you remember about classic television. 763-533-1710 is the viewer response line. And um, that's about it. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next show. Why be so meddlesome? Must you assume we're dumb? What is it you protect us from? FCC, F U. It's time we take a stand, shout it through the land, we can't stand you. And while we fight this fight, we can say with delight that ours gone to satellite, FCC. Sing, oh.
Just you assume we're dumb. What is it you protect us from? FCC, F U. It's time we take a stand, shout it through all the land. We can't stand you. And while we fight this fight, we can say with delight that ours gone to satellite, FCC. And this is how it really differs, I think, from the other two groups. Um, supervisors are invited into the team. So not, um, I just want to know who is my supervisor so I can check in with them. With this group, I want my supervisor side by side. This is a team opportunity. So why aren't you just a part of our group instead of you know, being somewhere over there and leading us? No, you should just be side by side. So the similarities between the two here, it's in their work style, goal-oriented, get things done, boom, 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 let's just get it taken care of. Where these two relate very well, the influencers and the affiliates, it's in their communication style. While this group is, is truly the task-oriented, you know, give it to me, I'll get it done for you. These two like to talk about it a little bit more. Get the buy-in from the group before we move forward. Make sure that we're influencing the way we want to go with our project before we move forward. This group just wants to get it done. So these two groups appreciate meetings or telecons more than this group. This group will say, send me an email, list out the bullets that I need to do, I'll send it back to you, give me a timeline, and we're, we're moving on. While this group would say, let's get together and talk about it. 
So what do you think? Was that helpful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you see people from each of those groups that you work with, live with, volunteer with? Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Everywhere. How can you use this information? Any thoughts on what you could do with this info? I think it's important to, I'm sorry. I think it's important to recognize the different style that um, you, who you work with or volunteer with because I recognize that you know how to, I mean, have certain tasks or how to approach them um, with certain things that you want to get done. So different people want to do different things. Absolutely. Any other ahas or thoughts on how they could use this? I think it's helpful to have the knowledge you know, of the different styles. If there's conflict, then you can better understand the conflict. Mm -hmm. Good point. Absolutely. Would you recommend uh, one group not supervising the other? 